Uh, so what I want to say is um, I want to express um, some thoughts to what's happening in the world. And, and sometimes I think it's important that we remember, you know, here we are and when we are promoting what we love in our businesses and, and um, in, a, in a way I feel sometimes I move in my bubble of hats is the be all and end all and, and that is certainly not so in the light of what has happened in Lebanon today. Um, so many people have been affected on the top of what they are already dealing with with COVID. And um, America has just dealt again with another cyclone and, and there's this sense sometimes that, um, yeah, well, it's another cyclone. Um, and we have them here in Australia as well in certain parts. And we Melburnians, where I am in, in, in Victoria in the south, uh, don't necessarily, I have never been in a cyclone and I understand that to be a really scary thing and that this is big uh, for people who are affected. And we are affected here in Australia, in Victoria, in that uh, section where I live in, with stage four close downs uh, because of the COVID and we are trying to get on top of that and people are infected. And, and around the world, we do have our opinions and everybody has their own way of coping, but also their own opinions. Do masks work? Do the masks not work? Should I wear them? Should I not? No, I don't. This is an infringement in, on my rights. And somehow we forget that um, our rights doesn't, doesn't come on its own. Um, rights has a pair, is a pair and has a partner. And uh, to rights, uh, there is responsibility. And we cannot have rights without responsibility. And, uh, and if we give away through our responsibility, then we also have no rights. And it goes hand in hand. And, and I, I, I just really want to um, express that, that a lot of stuff is going on around the world. And, and um, I have friends in Hong Kong and uh, who are Hongkongese and who have been dealing with great, great hardship and fears around their country and their homeland for a long time. So I feel it. And, and I know this is not what <laughs> I wanted to say today because I, I had lots of other things I prepared and I will tell you other things. But I want to give some air to this and put in perspective that we are so lucky if we have um, um, something we can focus on and to make ourselves busy and to use um, our skills for ourselves to support our well-being and to also um, for somebody else because I do believe in hardships whatever they might be a um, human mind becomes very creative and gets back to creativity in order to create something make something and focus into creating when there is so much devastation around us and hence why I carry on doing what I'm doing and um, even so some days are uh, harder than others, the commitment to be here on a Wednesday and the commitment to have my talks on Mondays with people around the world and, and after this I'm going to speak to country women in Australia, um, it, it, it helps me greatly. I gain a lot from that. I gain a lot from the connection and I gain from knowing that there might be somebody on the other side of this camera who is hearing me, who feels and um, shares my concerns and my hardships in a different way, but can relate to it. So, and having said all of that, um, I would like to 
tell you about show you I talked in in an earlier um, little tutorial the other week about egg iron and I talked about the stand but I didn't show you the stand and since I have found my stand and this would be the stand of an egg iron and it is a very heavy metal and it has got a plate here with the ability of four screws and this would be screwed onto the work table and this item here you could you know open that up take the egg iron out and change it to a bigger one or a smaller one this um, egg iron here is not a particular big one um, I have bigger ones and they they come in different sizes so that would be one of the stands um, and they didn't have to be so elaborate they could be just as I explained a ring screwed to the work table but that's certainly a good one then I also uh, wanted to show you um, this uh, cutter a cutter the brim cutter because there's a lot of hatters and and uh, milliners now making the men's hats uh, where the, the cutting of the felt is um, um, a, an important part that it is cut really nice and straight and there's different ways you can do that you don't necessarily have to use this tool because that is also possible to be done differently but it is a beautiful tool which was made here by um, a guy in Adelaide and it's um, Hat Blocks Australia. He makes Hat Blocks and many of you probably know him and he has created his version of his brim cutter and he resolved it in a very safe manner. It's beautiful and I believe you either can buy it directly through him or I also think that Torben Reiner does have them too. So I wanted you to, to be aware of that. The other thing, I did talk on my Monday talk, um, the chats we have around the world, about those gloves and you, you kind of wonder um, what they're going to be about. And, and they are very useful for making snowballs in Austria. And as a matter of fact, they are exactly for that to be in the snow and and have a good fun and be really warm because they are hand felted but as i live in melbourne and austria is uh, a rather a uh, far place so those gloves have been adopted for making um, hats when there is a lot of steam with the steam irons and when you um, look at them they are really 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 thick there's no f no heat is gonna go through them and you can also lo look for uh, oven mitts you know some some thick oven mitts which uh, will protect you and that is a great tool to have when you I, I would only have one on but it's left-handed right-handed so because often when you have this steam iron or the, the 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 irons the if you should be working with this the the iron irons and and a wet cloth which creates a lot of steam and then you have all the steam always coming around and we do burn our fingers with that and and then we sort of become not so so effective with our work that will help a great deal and oven mitts i'm sure there are some great ones which are comfy and you know still give you the agility what you need when you handle the irons uh, another thing i talked about was um, this which because of all the mask stuff we are everybody is thinking masks making masks which is fantastic and i i personally wanting to make myself things which are comfortable and at the same time um, doing my bit to protect others from whatever i might have and you remember 
or might not know, but there is a technique in, in hat making where you make a little wire frame, not as big as this one, smaller. It might be a frame sort of about that big, as a matter of fact, sort of like when you look at my hand, sort of a, a circle about that big. And that circle would be made from wire. And not, not unlike that, but this is too big. And then you would put the veiling around that and the veiling would be then sitting underneath the hat and the hat goes on top and then you have got this removable veil and it looks like it belongs to the hat. So that's a very um, um, nice way. And I have a tutorial of um, what I'm going to make and I'm probably going to give you this for free next week to show you how to do that. But on that principle, you could make yourself something with a clear plastic. And I just took, to try it out, I took a plastic sleeve and it's not a, a totally see-through, so that doesn't really work that well. But you can zigzag this around and then that could be sitting on top here. And then you can, I've got to take my trust. I had my Acubra on the stretcher because the leather band shrunk. And then you could, you know, put your hats on top of it and I am protected all the way around. And that is not annoying. So I like that for me and I will make myself one with clear plastic, which might work. And of course, I thought first I was going to welcome you with this protective device. But I did feel not that funny today um, in that heaviness of, of what is going on in the world and what people deal with. Because my life is so good. Um, I have a house and a garden and work and, and um, people who are um, supporting me and, and I feel I can be supportive to others. So, but I did feel it since Monday. There's a little bit of there's heaviness around me and um, I'm using all my tools not to succumb to this anxiety or, or, or getting really bogged down and believing that the world has come to an end. I do believe that this is it. This is our new reality and this is not going to go away. This is here to stay and and we need to find a way to live with this and um, without starting to push others away and um, uh, not start and, and, and not stop connecting because I we can be in connection we can reach out and I think the reaching out is really important and connecting with someone every day even it sounds frivolous or useless but it's not and that's why I also wanted to show you in, in a sort of a metaphor, I thought, you know, we are all spiraling. People spiral up and people spiral down. And for me, the spiral is we need to remember the spiral can go each way. And, and if it wants to go down, then do the opposite, you know, touch your, your defiant spirit, what we all have and say, no, I'm not going down, I'm going up. And, and and do one little thing which might help that. And this spiral I have made um, in the late 80s. It's made from a spa tree um, to make a block and I made several hats on that. And when you look at it, it, it was one of my probably first hat blocks I made. You make a shape from a spa tree. You can also do this from other materials. You can do this from um, buckram. Not as easy as it is with a spa tree because that's harder to find. And then you put inside strengthening layers of small pieces. And those small pieces, th there's a, you're supposed to overlay them that you have three layers that strengthen strengthens the whole lot up and you stitch it on in a um, sort of a cross um, stitch called, I, 
um, like a, uh, in German it's called a Hexenstich and in um, English it's uh, like a herringbone stitch and then it's wired on, on each side and you would put in um, also a rope, um, a thick one here on, on both sides for some head blocks which are made from a spa tree because that would hold the pins and then it gets painted with a spa tree lacquer which is a lacquer which makes that whole thing hard and there's different ones uh, paints you can use for it today to strengthen it and for the aspartre spiral the metaphor you know and I want to leave you with this that you think about that spiral you know it's a great skill it's a skill to spiral down or to spiral up like in order to go against it we need some tools and to be aware of what it is what helps us you know the check-in like like this block here needs in order to function it needs to have some wire which gives it structure it needs to have some um, hardening on the outside and the inside to make it harder and and supportive so it that a material can even be put on it and you can make a hat it's like see it as like the other person can lean on you sometimes it's you just have enough strength that you can hold yourself you know like the piece as as a piece of a sculpture but regardless it still holds itself up and it might not have the strength to make a hat on and that's okay too it can be a work in process and we learn more skills as we making our hats and our tools and so it is uh, with our personal abilities of coping emotionally and maybe you can remember that take that spiral away and and defy the going down to go the opposite way and and identify something what helps you it might be going for a walk sticking your head out the window putting a piece of music on looking at some beautiful hat images um, um, finding some jokes um, ha have a laugh uh, have a good cry and then look at a joke whatever it is but you are not alone in this you know we we are pretty much all of us in this and somehow we'll move forward this is just the spirit of humanity so have a good day